Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one very important past paper question on thermodynamics from May-June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 1. In this question, we will discuss some very important points about thermodynamics. And those concepts are very common, or simply we can say, those concepts are most frequently asked in past papers. So the understanding of this question is very important. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For this question, it is given to us we have a fixed mass of an ideal gas initially at a temperature of 17 degrees Celsius and the gas has a volume of 0.24 meter cubes and pressure of the gas is 1.2 times 10 to 5 pascals. For part A1, we need to state what is meant by an ideal gas. This is very common question. You need to understand how to state ideal gas. In order to state ideal gas, you need to mention few points. The first point you need to mention is a gas is an ideal gas if it obeys ideal gas equation means PV is equal to nRT and it has to obey this equation at all values of means at any value of or simply you can say at all values of P, V and T. So if gas obey ideal gas equation at any value of PV and T, then that gas is an ideal gas. Then you also need to state these quantities, I meaning you need to write down what is P, you need to write down what is V, you also need to write down what is T. So T you have to write down, this is thermodynamic temperature, means temperature in Kelvin. So thermodynamic temperature. So if you write on these points, you will get two marks. Now let me show you how you can write down a proper answer. This is how you can write down your answer. If you have mentioned a gas that obeys ideal gas equation, you will get one mark and this is M mark. Mean it has to be in your answer. And the second mark is A mark. If you have written P is equal to pressure, V is equal to volume, and T is equal to thermodynamic temperature, you will get second mark. So this is how marks will be awarded for this question. For the second part, we need to calculate amount of gas. Means we need to calculate value of N. Or simply we can say we need to calculate number of moles of gas. For this question, it is given to us the gas is an ideal gas. So simply we can use ideal gas equation. PV is equal equal to nRT and this T in ideal gas equation this has to be in Kelvin so first of all we can convert temperature into Kelvin T is given to us that is equal to 17 degrees Celsius we can convert this T into Kelvins by adding 270 theory this one is value of temperature in Kelvin so the unit for this one is Kelvin now simply we need to use ideal gas equation Equation, we can rearrange, we can write down N is equal to PV over RT. P in this case is given that is equal to 1.2 times 10 to 5 Pascal. We can plug in value. And V is given that is equal to 0.24 meter cube. So this is 0.24. You have to be careful with units. And value of R means gas constant is 8.31. Then temperature we have that is 17 plus 270. 73 kelvins. Now, if we simplify this one, we can get number of moles. In this case, number of moles are equal to 12 up to 2 SF because the least number of SF in raw data we have 2 SF. So, our final answer has to be up to 2 SF. So, the answer for this question is 12. This question has two marks. The first mark you will get if you have converted temperature into Kelvin, this is C mark, and the second mark is answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get second mark very straightforward question simply you need to understand how to use ideal gas equation for part b it is given to us the gas undergoes three successive changes as shown in figure 3.1 the initial state is represented by point a so this one is the initial state the gas is cooled at constant pressure to point b means p here is constant so simply we can write down p a to b p is constant by removal of 48.0 kilojoules of thermal energy so in this case 
thermal energy is released so means it's negative so we can say this is negative 48.0 kilo joules the gas is then heated at constant volume to point c so volume here delta v is equal to zero so the change in volume is equal to zero but temperature of the gas is increasing because gas is heated at constant volume p is increasing so temperature is increasing because v is constant finally the gas expands at constant temperature very important temperature here is constant so we can simply write down temperature here is constant back to its original pressure and volume at point a during expansion the gas does 31.6 kilojoule of work it is also given to us work is done by gas so we can say work done by gas in this case is equal to 31.6 kilojoules so this is work done by gas for this question it is given to us work done by gas is equal to 31.6 kilojoules now we need to understand work done on gas we need to understand work done on gas is equal to negative of work done by gas if work is done by gas it means the gas expands so gas apply force in upward direction and displacement is also in the same direction so we take work done by gas in that case is positive but if we need to consider we need to calculate work done on gas that would be opposite so in this case we can say work done on gas is equal to negative 31.6 kilo joules let's try to understand a little bit more about this cyclic process if you look at process between a and p in this case p is constant if p is constant we call this is isobaric process now if you look at between b and c in this process volume of the gas remains constant and this process is called isochoric 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 process means that volume of the gas does not change as volume of the gas does not change so it means in this case work done on gas or work done by gas that is equal to zero so simply we can say p times delta v in this case is equal to zero so in isochoric process there is no work done by gas and also there is no work done on gas so very important point between c and a it is given to us temperature remains constant if temperature remains constant this process we call this is isothermal process in isothermal process temperature remains constant so in this case delta t is equal to zero if change in temperature is zero it also means that delta u is also equal equal to zero means there is no change in internal energy of the gas so internal energy there is no change very important point we will need this one later to answer some questions and this is also very important point you need to understand if volume remains constant work done is equal to zero so this is very important one we will be using this one later for part one we need to show that magnitude of the work done during the change a b is equal to 19.2 kilojoules means the work done between these two points now for this one we need to understand how we can calculate work done work done simply is equal to w is equal to p times delta v in this case we have value of p so we can write down v final minus v initial so this is the change in volume value of p is given to us so at this point you can read value of p that is equal to 1.2 so simply you can read from here so this is equal to 1.2 so simply we can plug in value of p that is equal to 1.2 times 10 to 5 in this case the final value of v we have that is equal to 0 0.08 you have to be very clear with these units so you have to check these units for this question we have meter cube so simply we can plug in these values and initial volume you can read from here so the final Final, you can read from here so this one is vf and this one is v initial vi means the v initial that is equal to 0.24 now if we solve this one our final answer will be equal to minus 19.2 kilo 
joules. So this one is W. Means in this case, gas is compressed. So the work is done on gas. But work done by gas in this case is negative. So the work done by gas in this case is 19.2 kilojoules. So this is negative work done by gas. But work done on gas, gas is compressed. So the work done on gas in this case is equal to 19.2 kilojoules. In compression, work is done on gas and in expansion, work is done by gas. So simply we can also write down here in compression, work is done on gas. So work done on gas is positive. But in case of expansion work done on gas is negative so we can say work done on gas in expansion is negative and vice versa is true for work done by gas means when work done on gas is positive work done by gas will be negative and when work done on gas is negative work done by gas will be positive this question has two marks first mark you will get if you have used this formula then this is c mark you will get one mark and the second Second mark you will get if you have got this answer. Sign in this case is not important because question is asking you only magnitude of the work done. So simply you can say W is equal to 19.2 kilojoules. If you have written that, you will get the second mark. And in this case, work is done on gas. So that's the reason we got this is. This is negative because work done by gas is negative. So in this case, we got W work done by gas that is negative. So if you calculate work done on gas, that one will be positive. For the second part, we need to complete table 3.1 to show the work done on the gas, thermal energy supplied to the gas, and the increase in internal energy of the gas. For each of the changes A, B, B, C, and C, A. First of all, if you look at A to B, in this case, we have already calculated work done on gas because between a to B is compression, so the work done on gas is equal to 19.2 kilojoules, and this value we have calculated in part 1. For A to B, it is also given to us thermal energy is released, so this amount of thermal energy is released. So thermal energy supply is negative, so we can say thermal energy in this case is negative 48.0 kilojoules. Now we need to calculate in Increase in internal energy of the gas. So we have to use first law of thermodynamics. According to first law of thermodynamics, delta U is equal to Q. This is the thermal energy supplied plus work done on gas. So this is work done on gas and this is thermal energy supplied thermal energy supply in this case thermal energy is released so this one has to be negative 48.0 kilojoules work done on gas that is equal to 19.2 so the change in internal energy that one will be equal to negative 28.8 so it simply means that internal energy decreases now we need to plug in values here so from a to b we can say work done on gas is equal to 19.2 kilojoules and increase in internal energy is negative 28.8. Now let's go to BC. Between BC, work done is equal to zero because in this case, change in volume is equal to zero. So simply we can plug in here, work done is equal to zero. Now the second part is tricky part. You need to understand between C to A, temperature remains constant. Delta T is equal to zero. So it simply means means that change in internal energy between C and A that is also equal to zero and that is the tricky part you have to be very clear about that now if we need to calculate change in internal energy between CA so we can say the change in internal energy from C to A or you can say from A to C is the same because change in internal energy in this case is equal to zero. So we can say delta U from A to C. That one has to be equal to delta U from A to B 
plus delta u from b to c. In this case, we have delta u from a to c or from c to a because change in internal energy in this case is equal to zero. We can simply say this is zero. Delta u from a to b, we have just calculated that is equal to minus 28.8. So we can calculate delta u between b and c. So delta u between b and c in this case has to be equal to 28. 0.8 kilojoules. So this is value of delta u between p and c. So we can write down delta u is equal to 28.8 kilojoules. Now we have value of delta u. So we can use first law of thermodynamics again and we can calculate value of q. In this case, we have delta u that is equal to 28.8 q supplied we need to calculate plus work done on gas. Work done is equal to zero. So it means q supplied is also equal to 28.8 kilojoules. And this part was most tricky one. And next one is quite straightforward one. Between C to A means from C to A, change in internal energy is equal to zero. Now we need to calculate thermal energy supplied to the gas. So we have to use first law of thermodynamics again. Now for this process we have CA change in internal energy that is equal to zero. And we have work done on gas that is equal to minus 31.6 kilojoules. So the Q supplied in this case has to be equal to 31.6 Six. mean in this case change in internal energy is equal to zero so the heat supplied has to be equal to work done on gas so simply we can say this is equal to 31.6 work done on gas is negative so heat has to be supplied and if heat is added to the system that is taken as positive otherwise simply you can see from this equation so that's all what you need to do for this question if you got all these values right you will get five marks. This question has five marks in total. I have explained you this question in detail. If still you have any doubts or you have any questions, please leave your questions in comments and I will answer as soon as possible.